Hi everybody, uh, wherever you are, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, come on in. Because no matter what we're putting up with, and some people have floods, and some people have fire, and <laughs> some people have emotional trauma, and <laughs> no matter what is going on with you and your area, take a break and come on in, because that... <laughs> That's what I'm doing. You really need it. I mean, I've heard stories. You know what cabin fever is. <laughs> well, there's other states of cabin fever. And, uh, and it's nice to have hobbies and friends. We can visit even though we're in the house with the windows shut because of the smoke. And I could go on about that. We're thankful. We don't have, we can see across the street and we don't have fires at our door or flood. I mean, there's so much to be thankful for. So I know I'm smiling. Some days I'm a little sad about this whole thing. You get up every morning, you trudge and open the curtains and you go, oh no, not again. <laughs> but anyway, we, we hug each other and we just say we're here. And we're hanging in, and it's it's much nicer to hang in hang in with with you friends because I got to know you, and we can communicate, and we might be miles away from each other, but we have so much in common. And uh, today, we're going to talk about why it is the best thing to be growing in bark now. <laughs> These orchids have been tested because when the heat dome came, they were all out in the patio and I didn't bring them in right away. They suffered through that heat. They were getting more light out there, but then the smoke and I brought them in. So how are they doing and how is this affecting them? And it does make a difference if um, like we only have the one air conditioner, so our house temperature in the night is in the 90s. It just, there's nothing you can do about it. And if you go down the end of the house, it's usually the coolest. Well, it's worse. It is hot in this house. And it is because the windows, you can't open the windows or just let in more smoke. So the windows have been closed and it's, uh, it, it's stuffy. Jack had this idea, he says, he says, we got this really old uh, vacuum rainbow or something, but you put water in it, and, and then when you're vacuuming, all the dust is supposed to be collected in the water, and it is, it's usually dirty when I vacuum the carpet, it's full of dog hair, and it does work, but he says, what if we were to plug in the vacuum and let it run, and it will clean the air out? Well, it's noisy, I'll tell you that. And I tried it in the living room, but anyway, it also creates heat because it's a motor running. So anyway, I'm, I ended up moving it down the hallway, and I don't know if it did any good, but we, we've shut it off, and it's still sitting in the hallway, but I'm going to put it away. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I better not go on. Okay, now, why... Am I saying that growing in bark is the best thing? And it will actually help your orchids survive times like this. The only stipulation, and I have just bark, there's no other things in mine except a couple, and we'll talk about those. But uh, mine is just bark. And um, the only stipulation being humidity. You need some humidity. Well, our humidity outside today is um, it's higher than it's been. And in the windows, because I have lots of water bowls and everything, um, it's staying around upper 40s to 50s in the windows. Now, it was 30-something the other day, and I think the lowest all year round that we get, even in the winter when the furnace is on, 
is the low 40s, upper 30s. So unless you've got humidity that isn't registering, then you probably uh, need a room for your orchids that um, you can control some humidity or you have to add something to the pot and the surrounding area where they are to create more humidity. But even though we're as low as 30 and 40 percent most of the time, then um, bark is, is actually better. Because, and I'm going to show you, if you remember uh, through the heat dome I had two orchids out in the greenhouse. They had been out there for a few months. I put them out there in the early spring. They didn't look good and I thought I'm just going to leave them there. And then I had to just, when I'm watering the lemon tree or the orange tree, I would sprinkle it with water and that's basically all it got. So uh, it was on the bottom shelf and it was like 140 because the greenhouse because of all the, it's not glass but the plastic stuff. Um, it is twice as hot as outside in there. So, um, and I did the video where I showed you the orchids out there. Okay, I brought those orchids in after that video and they've been out on this patio the whole time. Now, I just brought them in to show you and I haven't watered them yet. <clears throat> it was my watering day today and there's a few I've left and haven't watered so you can see now, um, I'm watering twice a week through this. Uh, once a week they're getting a soak in the sink or pots that I have. But they're getting a soak for 10 to 15 minutes. And uh, I'm just wondering if I should talk about fertilizer. I'm keeping the same fertilizer routine. Now, if your, your orchids are out in the extreme heat, and you can't bring them in, you may want to cut out the heavy fertilizer, the commercial fertilizer that you give your orchids, or at least weaken it. If they're suffering and they're really dry because they're living outside in this, then they can't, they can't really do much with that fertilizer. Um, just a weak, weak tea would be good, the black tea. I am doing my regular and have been my regular schedule of watering because um, yes, some people, okay, um, quite often when the temperatures get in the high 80s and 90s, um, they'll slow their growth. But you can tell when you look at your orchids if, if they're slowing their growth. And if, gro excuse me, if growth is slow, then yes, you have to cut back on your fertilizer because uh, they just can't absorb it all. So, but I'm doing my same schedule. Yes, we're in the 90s in the house every night, um, but we have this window air conditioner that brings it to about 75 when we use it, which is usually around supper time when I'm making supper and in the evening after supper. That's the only time we put it on and it doesn't get to the rest of the house. And the temperature on it says that this room gets to be about 74 when it's running. Now, um, it's not really making it to the orchids that are out here, just to the ones here. So they're getting their cool down and uh, they're also getting their high heat. And they're not really, I don't think, getting the light they should get because we seldom see the sun. It comes out sometimes around supper we might see it, but basically we're not seeing the sun. It's a kind of red ball in the sky when we do. So um, now, through all this, they're just in bark. But why they're doing better? Because all of my orchids were in moss when I got them. So, um, <laughs> I, only a little lie because the last two babies I got, two of them came in bark, okay? All the rest of my orchids were in moss when they, um, when I got them. And I did the drastic change up from moss to bark. And yes, they do sulk. Yes, the leaves get floppy. Yes, they will. 
Um, and one other thing is that um, when you're transitioning, when I did it quickly, there's two ways you could ease them, like I did with a little one where I left, I added my bark, left some moss. A month later, I took out more moss. There's not much moss in those pots, but in another month, I'm taking more out. Soon they'll be all in bark, and we'll look at them later. You could try this with your bigger orchids. You could slowly transition, but it is worth it to make that transition because the, the roots are getting lots of air because of the size of the bark and air gets in. Water, when you, you're, you're not going to get rotten roots if, unless you've got this extreme high humidity and then you're trying to water too. They can live off that humidity in the air. That's how they would in the wild. So those roots are going to be looking for that humidity. And if you're in a real humid area, then you have to uh, maybe learn to make more airspace, uh, maybe terracotta pots with holes, anything to help the humidity out of the pot they're growing in. Um, so here, we're not that high humidity. So the bark is working out good, but it's getting a real test because of this heat, this dryness. No rain since spring. We had a couple nights a thunderstorm went through and we had some rain, and that is it. Like, so they have been, other than the two watering days, the one which I give the soap, the second one, the little ones I might bring here and just run the water through. The other I go with the watering can because most of them are over containers sitting above water. And we'll do a video of the orchids later. And uh, that's all they get for their second one. And usually it's Wednesday and Sunday I do this. And so that's how it's working for me. Okay, let's look at those orchids that were outside. They're getting no special treatment. They've never been in the house. And I'm not the person, kind of person that can tell you stories without being honest. So this is the truth. So now I haven't watered them yet and I'm going to. They are sitting on a container that keeps them above the water but over a bowl of water out there. And I do have a mister that I haven't really been running very much. <laughs> so um, let's look and see what's happening in there. Let me see if I can get a... Hold on a second. Just hold the stir. Yeah. Magic stir. I want to show you what's happening. Okay, look at these new roots. They've been getting no special treatment. They've got nice size growing tip. This, this shows how fast they're growing, how the depth of this growing tip. And look at this, even some of the old, old roots are now sending out sides pieces. Oh, I'm gonna get this right. Okay, I'm dripping a bit of water. That's okay. And, uh, so now let's turn it around to this side. And the same thing. And why, why are they um, sending out new shoots on old, drier, um, old, drier roots? And even up in the orchid, up in the, up in the stem, you can see new roots coming. So, the reason they're doing good is because they've already been acclimatized to the drier growing of growing in bark. Bark will drain quickly unless it's like a year old or something. And that's why, you know, a lot of times they say uh, when you go to bark, oh, you got to let the roots dry out. So, it's good to let them dry out and don't water. Maybe don't water for a couple weeks and leave them like that. I have learned that some things just aren't true that you hear. 
because actually, and it took me a long time to discover it, because they've been because they've been growing in moss. The phone is ringing. I hope it's someone's going to get it. Um, because they've been growing in moss and then put to bark, um, they. Um, what was I thinking? <laughs> anyway, um, they've been growing in, in moss and then put to bark. They're used to that moist environment. And you're taking that away real quick. So I think it's better, and I've learned over time, um, that actually, after you've put them in the new bark, you can give them, like, three waterings a week. It's new bark, it's going to run through quicker, it's going to help those roots adjust on a slower scale, unless you've got moss in there, which is another way to do the same thing. So, um, they actually, um, if you're worried about the roots healing because and leaving them drier, I don't agree with that. I say, um, when you've changed to bark, once a month for maybe the next three months, and I've been doing that with my newest ones, um, check. Take it out the pot, trim off any that are soggy or not right. It's also a good time to see how, um, how your watering schedule is working. And, and don't blame your watering schedule on rotten roots because they may, they may um, just be the old roots. But if your bark is staying wet and you have uh, rotten roots, then you know you have to cut back on your watering. So I wanted to show you that one. And they're going to go back out there because this is an ongoing test. And both those orchids, when I put them out there, I thought, oh my God. I had trouble throwing them in the garbage. So that was only one step above the garbage. That's how dead they were looking. And I just couldn't throw them in the garbage. So um, this other one, it doesn't have as many roots, uh, as many green grew roots. Now that is dry too, very dry. But it is um, growing a new leaf. It seems to be doing okay. So, those are those ones. Now, I have trouble with small pots here because they dry out quicker. And this is a fairly small pot. And uh, this is dry. I haven't watered it yet. And I could dump all this bark out of here and it would just be dry, dry, dry. Well, in fact, let me chop some out. Okay, I hope that's a window guide to say, yeah, we can do windows. <laughs> okay, let's just, just uh, I haven't watered yet, but let's just see what we can see in there. Okay, this is on, this is what it looks like in this pot on watering day. Have I been worrying about... Oh, water, water every day? No, no, because when you're growing in bark, these are going to be the hardiest orchid roots, other than growing in the wild where they are free and are mounted where they are free. This is about as natural as you can get, and I think you want to go to as natural as you can get. And yes, there, there was a struggling that went on. But you know what? When they, you can tell by the side, this is a new leaf. It's got new roots, it's got new leaves, it's growing fine. So, um, what I'm just, I really want to emphasize is, you know, don't be too quick to give up on that bark because, um, yes, it's a challenge. Ch make that change. And if you can buy an orchid in bark already, oh, I mean, that's my dream. That's my dream. Here we can't, but it's my dream. So um, later I'll put all this bark 
And if I could go right to the bottom, like this bark, this bark is dry. So I want to show you small, and then I'm going to show you big because we're going to do a bit of tour. But I have the the big pot in the sink, the one I put two in. I put one that was mine on one side, and I put one that I had just got and just put in bark. And uh, some of the leaves are limp, and I'm going to show you a close-up of what's happening in that pot and why I'm not worried. Now, I'm not going to over-worry about limp leaves because I'm after new growth leaves. Yes, I could have. I, I really didn't want to start picking bark out of one growing two together, but in a month or so, uh, we'll check how that one's doing. But uh, I'll show you that, and um, before I take you on a tour and show you a couple of things, now, when I ordered um, one orchid from uh, Roehampton Orchids, um, they gave me a free one. I am loving this free one, and I should send them a message, because they did send in moss, and as you know, I'm showing each video where I'm picking the moss out. And I'm down to maybe a quarter moss and three-quarter bark right now. And I'm going to go less. And they are in small pots, but they're in the sort of northeast window. So they're getting, uh, they're getting not, not, well, there's not much light here anyway, but um, <laughs> it's a cooler area, maybe. <laughs> so, um... What's happening in here? Well, it did have two flowers, but the first one that was actually out, it, it came off and I trimmed it. It was on this dead little thing here. But look at, there's more coming. They look really good. There's even more coming down on the bottom of this stem. And what's happening in here? Some of these roots are just loving to cling to this bark. And I, I want to show you this side. So the idea of the bark on the top and not having the bark. And then this little split was in it when I got it. So um, the idea of having the bark on the top and not poking bark around, which can help uh, some people that water too much get crown rot because it's hanging around that top surface, is that all these roots that are on the top, and they were on the top of the little pot when I got it, and uh, they are getting hardy. They are already getting used to being in bark, to having a drier air around them, and uh, roots growing in bark are hardier than any other root. They are. And I've read that on some of the Orchid Society pages. So um, this is looking really good, and I'm loving it. I, I really am. I'm so anxious for it to grow and get big. But anyway, I got this one on. And I should have done this from the beginning. But uh, I was given very good advice to put the date on the tag. And now I have, this was April 28th, 2021. And it's Fal Alfinia. At least I can pronounce that one. But when I ordered one orchid from Roehampton Orchids, can you guys put that one? I ordered, all right, no giggling, you guys. <laughs> I'm not even, I'm not even trying. Here we go. I ordered this orchid because I just loved the leaves. And I'm getting a baby leaf. Yes. And this one got watered, but there's nice roots down there. They're, they're nice. They've just been watered. And it's doing good. So, um... Now, these little pots are getting probably every third day I give them a little extra water, just with the watering can around. There's some moss in there. I don't want to overdo it, but I do give them some. Now, 
these ones, which I got June 11th, they came in real small pots. They were in bark. And I just put them in a little bit bigger terracotta pot. And they've been getting watered every second day. And I make sure I'm doing the pot too. Helps keep them cooler because they are cool growers. Uh, this is Melatonopsis Breathless Brilliant. And you can find that on the on uh, Googling it. And uh, the reason I, I put the terracotta is the cooling effect as the water dries. And um, it's not getting too dry. If I, put, I, I was putting off putting holes and I've gone with this for now. I'm happy. Um, apparently a sign of maybe a watering problem is pleated leaves. Touch wood, there isn't any of them. And the two flowers are still doing good. So um, it's happy. And I also ordered a Miltasia Charles Martin Fitch. And it's still getting new growth. And they're doing good. So now we're going to do a little a little uh, walk while I, I'm trying and do it real slow so you can get a good idea of what I'm trying to show you. So let's go here. Okay. So this is the orchid that was mine already. It was used to bark. Look at the size of this growing tip. That's showing fast, fast growth. Also, if you can look over here, there's an old, old brown root, and look what's happened. Lots of good growth. Don't be cutting off any roots that aren't soggy or rotten. Look at the wonderful growth coming out of that. Now, we'll first look at this one. So I'm also getting a new leaf, but look in here. Lots of root growth, even down low, even new ones coming out. I love to see that roots coming up a little higher. I love to see that because as your orchid being monopodial grows up, 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 you may have to cut the bottom off and you need roots up here when you've kept your orchid that long. Okay, this is the one that um, is new. And at Valentine's, it went straight into this pot. And yes, this leaf is, is limp. And so is this one. I'm not worried about it because, you know, in time, as new leaves come, you don't notice them. They're still on the plant. But look at here. What I am happy about is very good growth. Very good growth happening down in there. And over here, so um, I have not watered. This is the color of the roots. I have not watered. Why? Just from the humidity in the air. And when I'm watering, I also mist the outside of the pot, which is the drier edge because it's near air. And it doesn't hurt to miss the outside of your pot because those roots will grow uh, more roots trying to get out to that humidity. This, this is what is good. They're getting lots of air from the bark and you're also getting humidity. So, um, now let's... <laughs> I'll do a close-up in there. This is dry. Bone dry. I'll finish watering after. So, we'll just go over here for a minute. I think I'll finish before lunch, but... Okay. These, these also... This is very very narrow area here. It dries very quickly. And uh, new leaf. This is a new leaf. The size of it is showing that it's happy. It's not a small leaf. And of course this is this is the one that 
it did a, I can't get down in there to show you, but it had trouble growing that spike and it had it not. But they are happy. And look at this, here is another old root that is now coming out. I have not been doing anything I don't tell you that I am doing. So, uh, okay, now there's a traffic cone here. This is the one I, I potted uh, just um, this spring. I took it out of a pot. It's one that was injured, had leaf. Uh, it had a big fall, lost the leaf. And I had to cut some. It was very injured. I had it in a paint can a long time, one of my paint can pots, and then I put it here. And it's doing good, and it's getting a nice new leaf. But these leaves, they come so big, they're quite floppy at first, so I just kind of holding it in place. So, and this traffic cone, this one is the same size as the one we're raffling off this weekend. Good luck, everybody. And there's a nice new leaf. There's good root growth. It's happy. It's just bark. And the pot actually ends here because we put wire across it. Now the big pot that's in the sink is sitting on, this is lava rock. It, it holds water and humidity better than glass beads. And so it's sitting there, it's getting lots of humidity. And uh, their little baskets are also doing good. I will never change them. Any I get, find a nice wire basket. I'll do this, but one day they'll need repotted. They've never been repotted since I put them in. And I'll have to make sure I have a roll of the matting. And this traffic cone got a new leaf. And, of course, here's Lavender Light. I put her in here because she's in a pink can down in there. And uh, she had graduated up, and she's getting nice new leaf. And slip her work it down here. A little one that's been struggling along behind. This is my oldest orchid that is finally getting a nice new leaf. And I learned a lot on this one. <laughs> but anyway, she's coming back. The leaf is a good sign. The leaf is new. It's wider. And it's going to be longer. And this is terracotta. And uh, it is happy in there. It has some of the old leaves still on and new leaves all firm, all staying firm. Even our Monet pot. Now, <laughs> you can see the length of the neck of the monopodial stem. And you can see how these were all put in the same, how many flowers I've had off of it. And it keeps growing and growing. So eventually these will have to be trimmed back too. To get too long, but we'll see how they do. <laughs> and uh, I think that's it for this window. We're going to go to the other window. Okay, okay. Now here's the other one I just repotted. These were these were two of my pots. And um, here's an old root growing more. <laughs> I think that's Jack's brother on the phone from Ohio. They're whistling. <laughs> they know what they're doing. And lots of new growth in there. You can see in there. So they're doing good. Yep. And back here is Fal Memoria Retic. If, if you've had one of these, they do not like a lot of light. It took me a long time. Even though they say that the bigger plants have bigger solar collectors, they can collect more light. They don't need to be in the light. I was thinking that with these, but this isn't true. These like very little light. It's getting a new leaf, and it took me a long time to figure out what uh, that one liked. So... And this is a medium-sized traffic cone. They're hard to find. I like them, but they're hard to find. And they're the rubbery ones, not the hard plastic. I do not like the hard plastic. And the big lip fell still has 
three flowers and I've left them on her. So, and of course these two here, they're the ones that were struggling, but there's lots of roots coming. Let's see if I can get over here. Lots of roots coming. New leaf. This one was even worse. So, anyway, <laughs> we better go over here. We're almost done. Okay, this is what we've got out our window. <laughs> We're thankful we can see across the street. You cannot see town. You cannot see, you might see a hint of those huge mountains and a bit of the lake this way. But if we were in town, it would look the same here. You think, oh well, you're in the light, but it's there. It's just more and more of it in the air. It's just uh, day after day like this. So, have a good rest of your day, and we'll see you on another video when we'll be making the draw. And after that, one mister a month for six months. Bye.